Cool. All right. Uh, thanks for coming. Buddy. I'm pretty excited to show you what I made. Um, does that look right? Okay. Uh, yeah, so my name's Rich. Um, I work at Supply Frame. And uh, I work on the teams that do Hackaday.io and Tindy.com. Uh, Hackaday.io is a project, sh project sharing site, and Tindy is for selling you know, electronics. I'm sure you, you guys know what it is by now. Um, uh, yeah, and I also get to do stuff like I make uh, music tracks for the Hackaday Super Conference, which is like once a year. So that's really cool. I force everyone to listen to my music. Uh, yeah, um, and you can check me out on hackaday.io slash rich. I've got other stuff up there. Um, so tonight, I'm going to talk about uh, the game I made and uh, why I made it, uh, what inspired me to make it, um, the hardware part of it, the software, and uh, how I built it and how I presented it. Um, just real quick, the timeline was, this was last year, so I started in August and uh, Super Conference was in November. So it's like two months, but then I went on vacation. It ended up being like a month. I had about a month to do it, so. I started, I started really strong. Um, this is, okay, there we go. Cool, so the game, what is it? Uh, it's basically like a carnival sort of style game. Uh, it's a shooting game, right? So there's like targets. You gotta knock out the targets, really simple. It started simple. Um, the trick and why I call this like a, a VR or AR or mixed reality or whatever you want to call it sort of game is that there's a physical set of targets and there's a virtual set of targets. Um, and I do a little trick to make them sort of share the same space. Um, so that you can see right here, there's pink and yellow ones. Um, yeah, so how do you play it? So basically, you can change your ammo color between pink and yellow. Both targets on the screen and in the real world have to be the same color. So there's like three things you have to do. Real target, virtual target, ammo color. If they're all matched up and you hit it, you knock it out. Uh, you get one minute, it's like a countdown. Uh, each target's worth one point. If you hit a wrong target, you lose a point. Um, yeah. So, so yeah, there's like these, you can see her playing, there's like targets there. Um, that's why I kind of call it mixed reality because you can walk around, right? You can walk around the targets, you can get really close, you can get farther away, you can go to the side, kind of like whatever you want to do. Um, and it matches up to the, to the smartphone screen. Um, yeah. So why did I do this? Because um, VR is really cool. Uh, we wanted to do something with VR at Supercon. Sophie wanted to do something with VR at Supercon. Um, and I'm like, great, that's awesome. Uh, this is, is really fun when you're by yourself, like at home. Um, but then when you take it into like a, a place with those other people, it ends up looking kind of like this, right? So like, it's not as amazing anymore. Uh, she's having a lot of fun, for sure. But like this guy is not really having much fun at all. Um, yeah, so what, what, what can we do to take the cool parts you know, and uh, make something nice? So my inspiration, uh, there's uh, James Bruton. He, he was a Hackaday judge. Um, he made this Lego game. Uh, he's using, I think he's using, yeah, he's using the Vive. But what he ended up doing is uh, hardwiring a display into his controller. Um, and then he's doing kind of, this is what, what I'm doing. You uh, shoot, knock on the target in real life, the target in the virtual life falls over too. Um, Arduino servos, I think, and he was using Unity. Um, yeah, so there was this one, and also this, these, this group of people called Master of Shapes. Um, they did this demo with Unreal Engine and this is the part where the smartphone comes into play with the, uh, the AR. Um, so they're using a client server set up. There's a server running the Steam VR stuff. And then um, the clients are all on these smartphones. So you can walk around in this room and it, the phone's kind of like a little window into VR. That was really cool. So I kind of took 
those two things and mix them together. So my idea kind of turned into like set hard requirements for myself. Like I didn't want to use the VR headset because I didn't want someone wearing something. Um, I wanted to maybe add in multiplayer if possible. Um, I wanted something blinky, cool for people to look at that weren't playing. Um, and then I'd figure out what to do with the actual targets and how the game worked later. So there's like a sketch of stuff. Um, so the hardware, so really basic stuff. I used an Arduino, um, and then I used the Adafruit 16 channel servo shield. Um, that's why I have 16 targets. <laughs> uh, yeah, so, uh, so the, the, the uh, shield does the servos, Arduino does the LEDs, uh, and the, takes care of the serial connection. Really easy stuff. Uh, the LEDs I used were the AP102s versus using like the WS2812s, which I think are more common. Um, so I read this article or page on fast LED. That's the library I used. Um, they said that there could be timing problems when you're using the uh, servos with the LEDs because I guess the 2812s are harder or they can have problems, uh, like blocking when like they're running that the server wouldn't go or something. So I'm like, all right. So I use these 102s. So you can see at this point, I already had them like blocked out. Like that's one target, that's another target kind of thing. Um, there's my servos. I got 16 of these SG90 micro servers. <laughs> and they, they suck a lot. <laughs> um, they're, they're just not powerful enough. I, I, I've never worked with servos before, so I've like, I don't know, they're cheap. They must be OK. <laughs> Um, <laughs> but I, th only one of them died, so I guess I lucked out. Um, so real quick, software, uh, there was like one Arduino sketch. Um, I'm just going to show some bits and pieces. Uh, this part here was, this is fast LED. This is like the best part was you could like break out that long strip into chunks. So I'd have, you know, my 16 chunks of LEDs, and then I could just treat those as like one unit. Um, that made it really easy. Uh, there's like the serial connection going on. Um, oh yeah. <laughs> God. So like all these servos, I guess I didn't realize they all have like an endpoint, and the endpoints on servos are not always matched up, so you have to kind of adjust for that. So in, in my uh, sketch, I kind of went back and I put in like, you know, I adjusted all these endpoints individually for all 16 servos, and it was like perfect, and it was amazing, and I had it set up over there on the wall. And then I took it all apart and drove it to Pasadena in a minivan, um, and I didn't label anything. <laughs> so then I reset it back up, and I turned it on, and everything went and they were making those screeching servo noises, and I was like, no. Um, yeah, so I had to do it all over again. Uh, so yeah, I rem reminding myself, label everything. Uh, yeah, uh, and then there's just some other functions like that I wrote specific for the game. So uh, listen for a specific servo, run the function, wait to reset. Like that's all that's going on. Um, so then for the other part, I used Unreal Engine, and I used Unreal Engine Blueprints instead of C. Um, so this is like visual programming. And uh, I don't know why I did it this way, but um, it, it, it starts to look really basic. Maybe that's why I started this way, because like this looks easy. You know, it's like uh, this, this part here is updating position for the, the trackers, which is um, the smartphone screen. So like every frame, it checks to see, are you the server or not? If you're the server, get the position of the tracker notify all the clients. And then the client goes, okay, cool. This is where I am, and then updates the screen on the phone. So it's like, that, that's, all, that's all the magic there. That's it. But then there's like the rest of it. Uh, yeah. This is what it turns into like in the next hour. <laughs> it's just spaghetti code. Um, and this part here is only dealing with spawning and destroying and creating and manipulating the targets. So none of the actual like other gameplay logic is here. Um, but you can see me like 
setting patterns of arrays. It's crazy stuff. Um, yeah, target groups, uh, rotating target patterns. So the way I kind of set it up was like, the lights change colors, but it's not random, because I needed to know, like, the Arduino, Arduino needed to know what color pattern was running, and the uh, Unreal Engine needed to know what color pattern was running, so when you'd shoot, I could know if it was matched or not, and change the colors and kind of follow through. So I just kind of hard-coded all of them, but put in enough variation to where it looked sort of random, but at some point the colors would match up, guaranteed, so you could actually, like, finish the game. Um, yeah. So, yeah, so, so Unreal Engine, you know, y it's, you're using Steam VR, um, which does all the heavy lifting. Uh, all the positional tracking and stuff is just done for you. Um, yeah. it, it, it's really easy to scale for multiplayer, so you can have multiple tracking going on. Um, it's also really cool because it works in, like, no light or low light because the base stations are just shooting out lasers. Um, as opposed to using something like, I guess now you could probably use, what, like uh, AR kit or something. Um, but I think because that's using the camera on the phone, there might be issues with, if people are walking around and you just lose signal and it might not work as well. But I don't know, maybe it would. Um, I used the sync cable on the base stations because then you can kind of put them like anywhere. They don't need to see each other. So it's really easy. Um, and then you have the options between the wand or the tracker. Um, I went with the wand because it was a shooting game. I just needed a button trigger. It's built in. Uh, the, the tracker, you'd have to kind of do that yourself. Um, but if you want to do something really custom, these are cool because of these pogo pins. Um, you can actually use them as like a digital, you can digitally write out. So like an event on the game, if I tap the phone, can send a signal to the pogo pin, which will drive a pin high or low or whatever. So that, that's really cool. I was gonna do something maybe with that, but I knew I didn't have enough time, so. Um, yeah, so the other thing is like, because I wasn't, wasn't using the headset, I didn't want to have it connected. Um, I actually ended up leaving it connected, but if you don't wanna use the headset, you can set up a null driver which is like runs a virtual headset. And then you can get all the benefits of this room scale tracking um, without having to have like a powerful gaming machine hooked up to it. Can run off like a normal like laptop. Um, yeah, and that, that's how you do this. This is just Steam VR settings. Uh, cool, so then I, I needed to 3D print a bunch of stuff. So I, I bought a 3D printer and I got this Monoprice Mini Delta, which is like really cheap. It's also really tiny, and I needed to print a lot of stuff. So I, I got this thing out of the box, and then I started printing for like 30, 30 hours straight. Um, and it did it. It didn't die. Um, so some of the stuff I printed were the, uh, these, are the uh, these are holding the target, the LEDs, and the servo. Um, and it set up to go on a, like a T-slot rail system. So it's just two pieces. But for some reason they took, I don't know, the bottom piece was like two hours, the top was like an hour. Um, yeah, so 16 of those. Um, these corner pieces for the frame, uh, just, they're just zip tied to a, it's a step and repeat stand for a giant banner, right? So those go on there. And then this, um, the grip for the controller is actually two pieces. These are just modified designs, and I just smashed them together, and then broke them back up so they'd fit on, fit on the mini delta bit build plate, which was really tiny. It was like four inches, um, but this I think turned out really good. Uh, the targets were laser cut, and if anyone has walked by, you can see them back back there. Um, th these were like my favorite part. Um, I went with pins because I wanted something that looked, you know, like regular carnival game style. Um, and then just laser etched that pattern on the top, which was exported from the model. And then I imported an illustrator and made a vector to go into the laser. 
So it gives it like a really cool 3D effect uh, with the LEDs under it. Um, I tried using the, uh, there's like a specialized acrylic that's for edgelet stuff that has like reflective material in it. Um, I, and I didn't like how it looked. It looked kind of foggy. This one was like super crystal clear, so I went with this one. Um, yeah, so visual design for the game, for the virtual game part. Um, I actually tried to make all the assets in Google Blocks, which is like a VR game, so you can draw in 3D in VR, and then export the models into Unreal Engine or Unity. Um, I ended up only using the ground, like I had this other stuff, like really weird stuff. <laughs> um, but I ditched all that, I just kept it kind of simple. Um, yeah. So this was like November 6th, so yeah, five days before the Super Conference. And uh, there it is next to the refrigerator. Um, and I'm testing it out, so I have it working. I can shoot a target, and it knocks down here, and it hits in here, and that's it. And there was like a bug with spawning. Um, so I, this is when I rented the minivan and drove to LA with everything. Uh, so when I got there, I don't know, maybe, I forget when I fixed that bug, but I, fi I probably fixed it there. Um, there was, I was just using a function that would like destroy all targets and rebuild the targets, and I was assuming it would do that in a certain order, and it did for the most part, except randomly, sometimes it wasn't the right order. So it was like messing with my head. Um, I just ended up writing it by hand, and then it, in a certain order, and it works fine. Um, I had to write the restart game function, which is like, there's directions that float behind you, so if you turn around and shoot the directions, um, it resets, starts the timer. Uh, the timer, the countdown timer in the score system I wrote during Super Conference, um, I was in the back of one of the rooms running the video system, like pressing the switches to change the displays, and then also compiling clients on the side and then running them back to the front to put them on and like test to see if, if it worked. Um, so that was like right up until like the party started, but it, 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 it sort of worked. It's very basic, right? There's like a countdown timer and a score. Uh, yeah. Cool, so success. Uh, I, I like that it was very easy to like pack down if you labeled everything uh, to put back together. Um, it was really just these like long bars that were a little unwieldy, but everything else fits in a really small box that acrylic packs down flat. Um, it ran all night, it didn't crash. Uh, the LEDs look amazing. Uh, I was running the uh, client on a Nexus 6P, which was boot looping, uh, and it didn't boot loop all night, which was great too. Uh, and no one f dropped it on the floor. And I, I kept some high scores. Uh, most people got zero, because most, <laughs> most people would go in and just like spam the targets, which that's fun. Why wouldn't you want to do that? But because I was taking away one point for every wrong target, they would just sit at zero the whole time. And I'd, I'd be like trying to explain to them, no, don't, 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 like take your time. You have a minute. <laughs> um, and uh, they'd, they'd still end up kind of spamming it. But some people got really close to perfect scores, so like they'd get almost all targets out without getting, without hitting any wrong targets. Um, it was just really, really hard. Um, yeah, so it, it took a long time to explain how to play it because of those three levels of like, it's gotta be this color here, it's gotta be the same color on the screen and you gotta pick what ammo you want and you gotta use these grip buttons underneath that you really can't see and change the color to hit the right color. And so I had people like explain to other people how to play the game and they'd be explaining for like two minutes, the game only goes for like a minute. So there's like explaining longer than it takes to actually play the game. Um, and then they'd be like, I get it, I get it, I get it. And they'd be up there like, it doesn't work. It's, just, it's, not, work, it's not working. And like after the first game, they're like, oh, they have to be the same color. It's like, yes, got it. Um, and the, the penalty for the wrong targets was way too high. So I needed to like give them more points or something, take away less. Um, yeah, so there's people playing around with it. Uh, 
there's like a full shot. So you can see like the base station at the top. I had one off to the side somewhere. Um, and for the most part, those worked perfectly. Um, that's it. Thank you.